Hello and welcome everyone. Excited to get started with virtual instruction with Common Lit. My name is Netta Anaseri and I am the Technology Projects Coordinator for OTAN. This webinar is being recorded. Thank you so much for attending and I'm handing it over to Rob from Common Lit. Hey there, it's, uh, it's great to meet all of you. Um, thanks so much for coming to today's uh, training. I'd love to just give you guys a little bit of background on myself um, and I'll have my, my co-presenters introduce themselves as well. So my name is Rob Fleischer. I'm the Director of School Partnerships at Commonlit. Um, and be before I worked at Commonlit, I was a middle and high school uh, special education teacher. Um, so I'm just really excited about our program and telling you more about uh, how Commonlit supports um, students of all ages all throughout the United States. Um, and I'm here today with um, um, two of my colleagues, Bryn and Amanda, and I'll have them just quickly introduce themselves as well. Hi, everybody. As Rob mentioned, my name is Bryn. I run our district success team at Commonlet, and I work with a lot of our, our school and district partners that are looking to train their teachers and roll out Commonlet. So I'm excited to be with you all today. Perfect. All right. Uh, I'd love to just uh, uh, first just start off by, uh, oh, uh, sorry, Amanda, I thought we lost you. <laughs> Oh, it's okay. Um, hi, I'm Amanda. Um, I'm on the school partnerships team as well. Um, I used to teach for special education um, in early ed and early elementary. I'm really excited to get to know you all today and looking forward to seeing your questions on Q&A. Awesome. All right. Um, with that, we're just going to start off with a very quick agenda so you know what to expect from today's training. Um, first, we're just going to start by doing a brief overview of Commonlet. We'll tell you a little bit more about our literacy resources. Um, then we'll, we'll kind of walk through the website and we'll start by choosing a great lesson from Commonlit's platform. We'll show you some of the different lessons that Commonlit offers. Um, then we'll show you, uh, we'll do some work where we'll show you how to create a class and, and get your students set up on Commonlit. Then um, we'll, uh, we'll talk a little bit about what it's like to assign a lesson to students. What does it look like from the student's uh, platform? Um, what are the lesson planning resources that a teacher has access to as well we'll cover? And then we'll talk about what it's like to grade a lesson. Um, what data do you see as a teacher? What data does, a, does do the students see? How can they track their own progress? And then we'll finish up with just like some next steps um, and ways that you can get started with Commonlet. So just a little bit more about Commonlet. Commonlet's a completely free reading program uh, for, uh, uh, that has over 2,000 reading lessons in both English and Spanish. Uh, it's completely free for students and teachers uh, and families. The way that it works is that you can choose a lesson from our website. Uh, we have short stories, poems, nonfiction articles. The difficulties of, of these lessons starts at a, at a grade level three equivalency, and it goes up to adult level uh, literature. Um, you'll see um, once, we'll talk a little bit about what's included in the library um, in a little bit. Um, you can download just about any lesson from our platform. You can also share every lesson on Commonlet with uh, your students through the Commonlet platform. Um, we'll, each lesson comes with lesson planning resources for teachers and um, a series of tools that students can use to help scaffold instruction um, and help them effectively read Commonlet's uh, uh, reading lessons. The next is that uh, students and teachers can both track their progress on Commonlet. Uh, teachers are able to complete all of their grading through our platform. You're able to track student progress on a lesson and then also across a school year. And we'll talk more about those features as well. Um, finally, Commonlet also has over, uh, just about 500 lessons that are written in Spanish. And many of these are from, uh, the vast majority are from uh, uh, authors who were born in Mexico or Latin America. I'm gonna go ahead and jump now to the Commonlet library and we'll just kind of explore some of the different resources that Commonlet has to offer. Uh, first, you'll notice that Commonlet's English library has over 1,500 reading lessons. Um, then, as I kind of scroll down here, you're going to see just some of the most uh, popular texts on Commonlet on this first page. Um, you'll see poetry from great authors like Tupac Shakur or um, Langston Hughes. You're also going to see um, great short stories by contemporary authors like J.K. Rowling. Um, or Roald Dahl, or Shirley Jackson, or Langston Hughes. You're also gonna find um, really great informational text about influential people or important events in history, like the Holocaust, or Jackie Robinson, or Malala. 
Um, so a really great mix of informational text and literary text. It's about 50% of each in the Commonlet library. On the left-hand side of the page, I can uh, browse the library in a variety of different ways. I can search by Lexile level. I can sort by the grade level difficulty of a text. I can also search by things like historical topics or by literary genres. Um, I can search by a particular theme of a text um, or, by a comp or by a common core standard. So there's many, many different ways that I can browse the resources to find the perfect text that I'm looking for. Um, since what I'll, what I'll do for today's purposes is I'm going to search for a text that's between 1,000 and a 1,200 lexile. Uh, specifically, I'm going to look for a short story. And this is going to give me uh, uh, 49 possible texts. What I'm going to do for today is I'm going to choose the text um, Raymond's Run. It's a great short story that's uh, one of my favorites. One thing that makes Common Lit's reading program really effective is that all of it comes with a lot of really great lesson planning resources with each lesson. And the, the lesson planning resources that you'll find with each lesson are very similar from lesson to lesson, so you know what to expect. At the top of the page, you're going to find a series of tools to support you. The first is paired texts. Paired texts are other texts from Common Lit's library that share a similar theme or topic. Um, what we do is we take those other texts, we provide a little bit of background on that other text and then provide some uh, questions to help you compare, help you and your students compare and contrast those texts to one another. We also offer related media. Related media are usually videos, sometimes a song or sometimes a slide deck that help to introduce um, or provide an extension uh, to the lesson. We also provide an answer key and that's available to teachers after they uh, uh, verif uh, register for Commonlet and verify that they're an adult. Um, if I go back to the lesson now, I have a couple of choices. The first thing that I can do is I can download the lesson. Just about any lesson on Commonlet can be downloaded. Um, if I download it, uh, it's extremely uh, easy to use. You'll see here that there's the reading passage, uh, and then at the end of the story, oops, sorry about that. At the end of the story, uh, you'll get a series of multiple choice questions um, that you can give to your students. These are all standards aligned. And there's often a writing question as well. And then there's a series of discussion questions. The discussion questions that we offer um, are meant to be much more open-ended and allow students to make a connection to their lives or to the world around them. Um, I'm going to go back to the text now. The other thing that you can do is, um, especially uh, to support uh, distance learning or to support online learning in general, you can assign a text through the Common Lit platform. Um, so for today, I'm going to go to, uh, I'm going to click the, the, the class that I would like to assign this to. Um, I also have the option to assign a lesson to individual students. Um, but to, for today, I'm going to assign it to my whole class. In this box here, I can customize the directions or what I want students to take notes on as they're reading the text. Um, so I could, I could tell students exactly when I want them to, uh, uh, how I want them to complete the assignment, what I want them to take notes on um, in this box. I can also turn on a feature called guided reading mode. Guided reading mode is, a fe is one of Commonlet's most popular features. It's, um, it provides students with a series of scaffolded questions to support their comprehension as they read. Um, it helps them hone in on the main ideas uh, as they go through the text. Then just this past week, we released another feature that allows teachers to give the flexibility of assigning just the multiple choice questions, um, just the writing questions, all of Commonlet's questions, or none of Commonlet's questions. So it just gives teachers a little more flexibility when working with their students. For today, I'm just going to assign um, the, the, the writing question. And then finally, I'm going to choose a due date. I'll say that the assignment should be due next Friday. Um, if, if your students are using lessons on Commonlet and they happen not to complete the lesson by that date, they could still submit the assignment late, 
but when that assignment is submitted, it's flagged for you that the assignment came in past the due date. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna click the assign button. Um, Bryn or Amanda, is, are there any questions that uh, we should address to the group? One, one question that did come up that I wanted to make sure to highlight that, that Rob, you covered a bit in the beginning of the presentation mm -hmm. is there were some questions around what is Commonlet, who are we, mm -hmm. and who has access to our program? We are a nonprofit, we're a 501c3 nonprofit, and our mission is to provide this website and associated resources completely free for teachers and students around the country and the world. So all the teachers you work with and everyone on this call does or should have access to our reading program. Uh, we'll show you later on if you have any questions how you can get in contact with our support team, but please know that this will always be free for you and your students. So now I've assigned the lesson to my students um, and now I'm logged into a sample student account. I'm gonna show you a little bit about what it looks like to complete a lesson um, on the online platform. So as a student, uh, actually first what I'll do is, is uh, I can go, if I'm a student, to my performance page. I can see how I've done on previous assignments. So I can see how I've done on all of the lessons that I've already completed. Um, I can also see all of the lessons that I haven't turned in yet that I need to work on. And then at the bottom of the page, I can also track my progress. I can see how I'm doing by uh, uh, standard on all of the common lessons that I've completed. So um, I've completed um, three questions on RL1 and I've gotten them all correct. Um, so I know I'm really doing really well on that standard, but I could look at a different standard and I could see that I'm not doing as well on that standard. So it's just a way for me to, to track my progress. If I'd like now, I can go back to my assignments and I'm gonna go ahead and start that lesson that my teacher assigned me. Uh, I'm gonna click on the assignment. A uh, couple of resources to point your attention towards. At the top of the page, uh, to three really important tools. The first is called Read Aloud. Students could listen to the text read uh, uh, to them. Uh, so I click on this button. I'll play I this out loud. I don't have much work to do around the house like some girls. My mother does that. And I don't have to earn my pocket money by hustling. George runs errands for the big boys and sells Christmas cards. Um, so I can listen to the text or I can listen to the questions on the side of the page. I can also translate the text. Commonlit offers digital translations in 27 different languages. So I can choose the language that I would like to, to translate the text to. I'll choose Chinese. And I could read the text uh, in Chinese as I read the text in English. Um, finally, I can also take notes on the text as I read. So um, I can say here, the main character is describing her life. And all of these notes that I take, my teacher will be able to see. I can also highlight portions of the text um, if I'd like to. Now, um, what you'll see here on the right is what we call guided reading mode. These are the questions that I mentioned a little bit earlier that appear for students to help scaffold their uh, comprehension of the text. So uh, let's see. Uh, the, I believe the right answer to this question is C. Oops, yep. So I got this right on the second try. Um, after I got it wrong the first time, I was prompted to look back at the text. Um, all of the wrong answers that I make here are recorded for my teacher so that they can track uh, my comprehension of the text as I'm reading. If I continue to scroll through the text, I get a little bit further. Um, and then I get that question right on the first try. And then I'm able to move right, right along. And my teacher sees that I comprehended that part of the text really well. So within the text, we provide uh, some definitions and footnotes. You'll see here, um, there's, we define the word um, uh, fit. Um, because it's an unfamiliar uh, uh, definition of the word. Um, we'll also, we also provide a definite or provide a footnote here for the term stagecoach, since we know it's a term that some folks might not be familiar with. Um, at the top of the page, you can change the size of the text. So now uh, we'll pretend that I uh, have completed this lesson and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna stop sharing my screen. I'm gonna switch back to my teacher platform. Uh, I'll do that one second. Okay, so now I'm back on my teacher platform. 
I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to, I'm going to pretend that I'm now ready, that my students have completed the last lesson, and I'm going to go ahead and begin um, grading their last assignment. So I'm going to go to my classes and I'm going to click on my first block class because I want to grade their assignments. And the lesson that my students most recently completed was the lottery by Shirley Jackson. So I'm going to go to uh, view student annotations. Here is where I can see all of the notes that students took as they were reading the text. I could see what Corey's note was as he was reading this part of the text. And I could co comment back on his uh, notes uh, to provide him with feedback or to push his ideas. Um, and it's really easy to use. Um, so here I'll tell, and I can give them that feedback to push their ideas forward. Next, I can go to the grading page. All of the multiple choice questions are gonna grade automatically on Commonlet as soon as students complete it. Um, but we do prompt teachers to grade the writing questions. And remember, there's usually one or two writing questions per assignment. Um, you'll see here that we provide an exemplar response. So you can review these uh, as you're grading your students' uh, writing. Then here, um, you'll see all of your student writing samples stacked up. And then you can easily score students from a scale to zero to four. And if you'd like, you can even provide a little bit of optional feedback um, to tell students um, how they can improve upon their work. Um, I'll click save. Now that I've graded all of my students writing, I can go ahead and click on the button here at the top that says view assignment report. Um, the view of the assignment report is one of the um, coolest features on Commonlet. You're able to see how you're in detail, how your students did on one lesson in a really easy to comprehend way. At the top of the page, you can see how your students uh, uh, did it sort of overall. I could see that my class average was an 81. I could see how students did on the multiple choice compared to the writing. And I could see who, who did really well in the assignment and who kind of struggled. Here's where you can see how students did on the guided reading questions. These questions are the ones that students answer as they read. And I could see here that for a student, perhaps like um, Angela's, she got almost every question right on the very first try, uh, which shows that her basic comprehension of the text was really strong. She probably understood just about every main idea in the story. If I look at a student here at the top like Sean, Sean got about half of those questions wrong on the first try, and it suggests that maybe his basic comprehension of the story was pretty weak and he might need to reread a portion of it, or that this text might have been a little too hard for him. If I scroll down a little bit further, um, I could see how students did on the standards align questions that they get at the end of the lesson. Uh, you'll see that you can see with these questions, you can see how each student answered each question. You can see how students did on the writing. Um, and you can, I can even send a lesson back to a student if I want them to give another try um, uh, because they, they struggled on this assignment. I can also see when students submitted the assignment, and if students submitted it after the due date, I would see here that their assignment was that their assignment was late. Uh, next, if I go back up to the top of the page, if I go to student performance, um, one of the last really important features to check out is you can also see uh, your grade book from across the school year. So if I look at my block one class again, I can see. Uh, how my class is doing overall. I can see that my students are doing better on literary texts than they're doing on informational texts. Um, and I can see how students completed uh, each assignment of the year. Um, one last feature is, is that I can also go into a student, an individual student's report and I can see how they've done on, I get a full report that I could print off that tells me how they did on each assignment. Um, and this is obviously really, really, really great for um, uh, like uh, report cards or like progress reports that you might be filling out for students. Okay, um, with that, I'm gonna go over to our Manage Classes page. This is when you create an, an account on Commonlet, this is the page that you'll be brought to, and this is where you'll be prompted to set up your classes on Commonlet. Um, you'll wanna click on the button that says Create a New Class. After you click on this button, um, there, there are really two different ways 
that uh, a teacher can set up uh, their classes on Common Lib. You can click on the button that says import classes from Google Classroom. We highly recommend this feature. Uh, teachers who use the Google integration with Commonlet uh, are tend to it tends to be a really really smooth integration that uh, helps promote um, the usage of Commonlet. It does a few things. The first is that uh, as a teacher, you can sign in with single sign on as your, as uh, as can your students. Um, you'll all be able to access your Commonlet accounts with with a uh, single sign on, so you won't have to remember as uh, so students won't have to remember their passwords. The second is that um, you can import your classes directly from Google Classroom, uh, which means that if you have your classes set up there, Commonlet will make will take a copy of those classes, so each student doesn't have to go ahead and create their own account. Third, you can post any Commonlet lesson to your Google Classroom stream, uh, which makes it really, really easy uh, to, to disseminate lessons to your students. And then finally, you can integrate your Commonlet gradebook with your Google Classroom gradebook, so any of the grades that students accumulate on Commonlet will also populate in your Google Classroom gradebook. We, are, we do not have a full integration with Canvas. Um, however, what you can do is with any lesson from a, any Commonlet lesson, you can post those in, 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 Google, in, sorry, in Canvas and it will route students um, to complete their lesson on Commonlet. However, we don't have a full integration. If you don't use Google Classroom and need to set up your classes a different way, you can use the create a new class manually feature. Once you click on that button, you'll be given, um, you'll uh, uh, complete some basic information about the class. You'll name your class. Um, you'll say the grade level of the students that you teach. And then you'll, you'll enter here. You'll get, sorry, you'll receive a, a class code. With a class code, that's how students will join your class. So students will go to the link uh, we'll go to Commonlet and then they'll click on the on the create an account button that one, after they create an account by providing their name and pass by, by creating uh, an account that has a name and password they'll enter the class code and with that class code um, they'll be they'll be routed to join your class um, that pretty much wraps up today's presentation are there any additional questions uh, uh, or, or things that I should address to the group, Bryn or Amanda? One, one important thing to highlight, I've seen a few questions regarding this. If you try to sign up for Commonlet, during that process, it asks you for your zip code to identify your school. If you do not see your school when you enter your zip code, please email help at commonlet.org. I will send that to everybody in the chat box. If you email help at commonlet.org, and give the zip code and name of your school, our team will help set that up for you to make sure you can create your account. Uh, if you're the first person from your school, this, this sometimes can occur. So please, if you have any questions or if you have any issues when setting up your account, please email help at commonlet.org, uh, which Rob has also shown on the screen there. Yeah. Um, it, just to highlight Bryn's point, this might be particularly the case we, because um, we have all of the schools that are traditional K-12 public schools. We might not have um, some adult education campuses in our, in our database. Um, so please just email help at commonlit.org and we can help facilitate the creation of your account um, in a very, very short amount of time. Here's a question. Is there a report that shows class and student performance by Common Core Standard? Yeah, there is. I can go back and I'd be happy to go ahead and show that. Bryn, this is Penny. I have a quick question that might help some of our audience members as well. Really? On that previous answer you said about entering a zip code and not potentially finding an adult education campus, some of our schools are associated with K-12 districts. So if they searched for that first, might they then have a better chance? It may not be the adult education uh, school, but it would at least be their K-12 district that they're associated with. Yes, yes. So chances are if they are associated with a K-12 district, we will actually already have their school set up for them. Um, if, if they would like and they want to enter the zip code of their school district, they can sign up at a different school in their district. There's not a problem there. Uh, but if they do want to be associated with their adult education campus, if it is not already showing up on that drop down list, our team is more than happy to set it up for them. Perfect. Thank you very much. Yeah, absolutely. Um, on the screen right now, you'll, this is the student 
performance tab. Um, so, oops, sorry about that. Underneath the, the grade book, I can, you can see this chart. This tells you how students are performing by common core standard. Uh, so for example, there have been six questions answered about RL6 in my class, and my students are getting 100% of those questions correct. Whereas with um, RL5, uh, students are scoring 81% in my block one class. Um, and you can see those for all of the common core standards that students have been assessed on here. The next question we have here is, um, can you show again the button where you create a class? And click on the create a, create a new class button. Yep. Perfect. So if we close out of that, Rob, just to highlight that once more for everybody, when you log into Common, once your account is set up, if you click on the My Classes tab at the top of the page that we see there, and then select Manage Classes, you'll be able to see the create a new class button to set up your class. Great. There's another question. Is this program friendly or accessible with cell phones? That's a really good, great question. It's, when I, it's something I forgot to address. Um, Commonlit is, is extremely mobile friendly. Uh, there's, uh, there's just one feature that doesn't work on, um, on a phone or tablet. Students can't uh, annotate the text on a phone or tablet or really on, or on any touch screen. However, on a, on a mobile device, everything else works perfectly fine. Um, students can read the passages, answer the questions, um, everything like that. And another question that came up, can I just post the, the lesson PDF to my Google Classroom if I would like? Yeah, that's a really great question too. Um, that is com that's completely fine. Uh, we, it's, it's, it's perfectly okay for teachers to post lessons, um, the post our PDF lessons in their Google classrooms. If you work at like a district level or you support multiple schools, um, we have some restrictions around that. Uh, you can just email partnerships at commonlit.org if you're looking to post any lessons online for more than just your class of students. Perfect. The, the next one I'm seeing here is, could you please show again for everybody on the, the presentation how, how students can annotate the text as they read? Yeah, sure thing. I'm just gonna switch my view for a second. So now I'm going back to my uh, student uh, platform here. And uh, here I can, uh, all I have to do is just hi uh, highlight a portion, um, uh, portion of the text and then click the T button. And then I can say um, the main character has a brother named Raymond. And I could save that note. Um, and then uh, just as a reminder, teachers will be able to see um, any note that students make on the text. Could you also show, uh, there's a question again to show how students make the font bigger? Yep. I can change it up here at the top of the page. There's a question, in order to set up an account, or basically how do we go about setting up an account? Yep, uh, what I'll do is let me, uh, let me open up a different browser. All right, so I'm opening up a new browser and I'm going to Commonlet and I won't be logged into an account here. Uh, if, so since I don't have, I'm not already logged into this account, um, I'll have the option when I get to this page to click the, the button that says create free account. And then um, if I'm an educator, I'll just click the educator button. And then here I'll enter my zip code. Um, so I'll, I'll enter the a zip code and then that's gonna give me the options for the schools that are in that zip code. Um, if, and from there, I just provide a little bit of information about myself and my, I provide my email address for my school um, create a password, and then there's just a couple questions after that, and then I'll be able to create my class. Um, and just to reiterate what Bryn said before, if you don't see your class on that list, um, just please email help at commonlit.org, um, and we'll be able, to, and our, our support team will help you right away. One of the two remaining questions I want to cover live is there's a question about whether there's a pre-assessment uh, that you can use to determine a student's reading level. Yeah, that's a really good question. This is a feature that we only have live on the site or this past year we actually we launched it and then we kept it live on our site from roughly 
uh, September through November of the year, we're gonna relaunch this feature for the beginning of this upcoming school year. Each pre-assessment on Commonlet has about 25 questions, or 20 to 25 questions, and it, it, it will tell you whether your, your students are performing, um, uh, per, uh, performing compared to uh, the students who took an assessment at that grade level. Perfect, and, and the last question for everybody, uh, could, we, could you highlight again uh, how students access their accounts? There are two questions regarding how students set up their accounts on Commonlet and whether they're the same accounts the teachers have. Great question. So let me switch back to my student account. Um, if I go into, uh, all right, so uh, here's a, the home page of Commonlet. If I'm a student, I'm going to go to the button here that says log in. And uh, if I'm a student, I can, I can enter my username that I get when I, when I uh, this comes, I'll know my username once I register for Commonlet. And then I can enter my password. And then I can manually enter my Commonlet account. If uh, I have, uh, if my school uses Google and my teacher imported my, my class with Google Classroom, then I won't even need to enter my username and password. Oops. I can just click the login button. If my, my school uses Google and I have, I, I have I, my, my account was created with a Google account, I can just click this login with Google button and that will route me into my Common Lit account. We, we really do appreciate everyone joining us today. To quickly reemphasize from the beginning of the call, we're, we're a nonprofit. So it is completely free for your team to use our resources. Uh, we're, we're excited to support you and your students in any way that we can, especially during what we know are some pretty unprecedented times right now with this uh, unexpected transition to remote instruction. Uh, we'll, we'll share, um, Rob will share his screen again with the different support pages or the different emails you can use to reach our team. I'll also be sending a few resources, including our FAQs page, in the chat box. So you can copy that if you want to access our FAQs page at any point. Great. I'm going to go ahead. And Rob, sorry, Rob, this is Penny Pearson again. I know one question that's come up and, and I know it has, uh, it's near and dear to the hearts of our adult educators here in California regarding your back end database of tracking students as they're working online. And that's a time on task feature. Do you, do, I didn't notice it when you were showing the screen, but as far as I could tell, um, Common Lit does not have a how much time did a learner spend on a particular lesson, correct? No, we, the only data around like time that we uh, reveal is when the student submitted the assignment. When they submitted it, okay. Thank you, Rob. All right, everyone, we're very happy that we were able to share this resource with our California field. This is exciting for adult ed, and I'm so happy that Common Lit is supporting our adult educators and our adult students using this program. Thanks so much again for having us today. You're welcome. Thank you. Yes, thank you so much. We hope to collaborate some more in the future. Same here. Oh, I am sure our adult educators in California will be happy to provide with ideas and, and uh, recommendations. They're usually pretty vocal about things like that in a very positive way. So I think they'll definitely want to see some new features, if at all possible. So keep your programmers busy, I suppose. Sounds good to me.